Well, I have to admit that the additional thoughts for Frank Ocean's Blonde has been an ass whooper <laughs> for me. A complete ass whooper. And the reason why, I think, is because the album has so many layers. Songs have so many cross-references to each other with different lines and different hints and just different entanglements that exist from song to song and, and even with the sounds, the pitches of his voice. Um, every time <clears throat> I have tried to take this album and kind of straighten it out in my mind so that it becomes explainable, it, it just falls apart, <laughs> which I think is fantastic. To me, that means Frank Ocean has really captured the feel, the thought process, the emotional chaos that exists within this album and that exists within a person who is going through a very, very difficult struggle, birth, both on a relationship level and on his own sex sexuality level. And, you know, when <laughs> I immediately, as soon as I start talking about it, I want to try and, and pick things apart and, and explain some of the things I'm, I'm, I'm picking up on. Every time I've gone down that rabbit hole, I, it, my video just falls apart. I end up rambling like a moron. I don't say anything that makes any sense. <laughs> and it's great. It's great. Because the music, the music and the, and the lyrics and the way the whole album is played out, it does it in such a way that you can't really just explain it in normal terms, in my opinion. At least not without writing, you know, 40 pages and having footnotes and references and all this other stuff that make it so technical it almost kills what the album is. Um, it really is an incredible piece of art, in my opinion. Um, it, it's, it's such a ride. And it's so cool that he can be so open and emotional about this, yet do it in such a way that is, you know, cryptic, vague, leaving little breadcrumbs here and there so that other people can get on this ride with him and go through this journey with him with their own experiences in their own life. To me, that's what makes a great album is when people of all types can listen to it and connect. And it's very rare when that happens. It's very rare when that happens. But when it does, it is, it is magical, pure magic. I think Blonde does that very well in spades. Again, I feel this compulsion to try and explain all these things. And I, I, I'm not going to bother because I'll have to delete another video because <laughs> I keep recording and failing. And I honestly, I kind of love it. On my first reaction, I said that White Ferrari was my favorite track. And that's not true anymore. My favorite track is Siegfried. I feel like Siegfried is the keystone to the whole album. I feel like everything... The whole journey, the trip, the, you know, the, the happy memories, the slow collapse, the kind of hard bottom that he hits with solo reprise, the weird, you know, pretty sweet, that cr crazy chaotic sound. I picture um, the end of Terminator 2 where the T-1000s in the vat of lava and just thrashing around and trying to change forms into anything that can survive that environment, but nothing can, of course. I feel like that's him, his idea of himself dying and him just thrashing around trying to figure out how to not do that but it he is dying in a sense you know that that version and then when you get into Siegfried at the end you know he starts talking about there's this part where the music gets really um uh what do you call it like really flourishes it's almost like a moment of ecstasy you know this is just a fond farewell this isn't my life it's just a fond farewell to my friend but there's all that sound that picks up because he's so happy, because he's embracing what's actually him by embracing this other person. Um, and then he drops into, you know, speaking of Nirvana, this little poem, and he references the phoenix feather on his dashboard. I think, yeah, he, his old self has died, and now the real self has risen up from that. And there's always these bits, too, in that song about, you know, I'm brave, I'm not brave, I'm brave, I'm not brave. Even in that song, it's his two personalities fighting over what he can or cannot do. And one thing I really caught on to, thanks to Good Kid Mad City, was at the end, he's saying, I'd do anything for you in the dark, in the dark. 
but it starts out with in the dark being somewhat loud and prominent, but it fades away. The more often it's said, the more it fades away, which reminded me of that second verse from uh, Sing For Me, where it's Keisha's sister talking about, you know, blah, 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 this and that. He's, she's all upset with Kendrick for, for talking about her sister and singing that song. And, and as the lyrics go on, he's, I'll never fade away, I'll never fade away, blah, 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 this and I'll never fade away. But the lyrics fade away because she does fade away. When he does that in the dark, in the dark, and it fades away, to me, that's him saying that self, that, that, that person who can only embrace this kind of love in the dark is fading away. It's going away. And then the, one of the final lines in that song, he says, I'd do anything for you. And he says it clearly. I would do anything for you. Whereas in the portions where it's bouncing back and forth between in the dark, the word anything is like really, really quiet and high pitched, like he's trying to whisper it, not say it prominently. Yes, he is. No, I'm just saying you're wrong. Oh, I'm wrong. <laughs> but see, that's great because she's listened to the song twice and immediately it hooked her too. And immediately she got a completely different take on the song, what it meant, what Frank was trying to say. And that's what's so fucking cool about this album. It's so cool. And I'm honestly, I was, at first I was annoyed that you even chimed in because I was trying so well to keep my train of thought. <laughs> I'm sweating over here. I'm like almost sweating. I am sweating. I don't know what take this is, but man, this has been fucking hard. But it's been so cool. I'm so glad you guys recommended this album. I'm so glad I took the time to listen to it. Frank Ocean Blonde, incredible piece of art, wonderful piece of music. It's the kind of thing where you can just put it on and it can be, it's almost like another person in the room with you. It's almost like another life, not like a person personality, but another life experience with you in the room. And if you're in that mood, you can almost conjure a similar experience to be with you and kind of go through this thing that you are also going through. It's like a guiding hand in a way. It's awesome. It's what makes music so incredible to me, and uh, I'm really glad I got to listen to it. <laughs> okay, what is that? It's seven and a half minutes. I'm going to go drink some beer, and uh, tomorrow is Death Grips Money Store. Yeah. All right, y'all. Take care.